Researchers from UC Berkeley have made dramatic improvements in sample efficiency for reinforced and learning control in their latest paper, CURL, Contrastive Unsupervised Representation Learning for Reinforced and Learning. Contrastive losses are proving to be a very powerful technique for learning representations from high dimensional data. Compared to supervised learning, where the losses push representations towards class labels, contrastive learning is about distinguishing examples from one another instead. So rather than pushing representations of cat images towards these 1000 class label vectors, the loss encourages the representation to be similar to a crop of the same cat image and as dissimilar as possible from the other images in the dataset. Curl implements the contrastive learning framework with the MoCo algorithm developed by researchers at Facebook AI. Adding the MoCo algorithm is a simple extension on top of these reinforcement learning models such as soft actor critic and deep Q learning. Adding this additional loss helps the mapping from high dimensional stacks of the last seen images when interacting with the environment into these lower dimensional representations for control tasks. This enables successful control from only pixel inputs and no physical state inputs such as the angular velocity on a given robotic joint, enabling further this transfer learning from visual representations for robotic control tasks. This video will explain the details behind CURL from researchers at UC Berkeley. To learn more about CURL and how contrastive self-supervised learning can be used to achieve sample-efficient RL, please check out this discussion on Machine Learning Street Talk between Tim Scarf, Yana Kilcher, and I with Aravain Srinivas, one of the authors of this paper. I learned a lot from this conversation about the history of contrastive learning, miscellaneous details of the paper, and Aravind's vision for the future of deep learning and unsupervised representation learning. This video will explain CURL, Contrastive Unsupervised Representations for Reinforcement Learning achieving massive gains in sample efficiency from only pixel inputs. CURL uses the momentum contrastive learning algorithm to facilitate learning the mapping from these high dimensional image inputs into latent representations that reinforcement learning agents can use as input to perform continuous control, such as bipedal walking in the DeepMind control suite or discrete control in the Atari games. This slide will give a quick overview of the workings of the CURL framework. As input, the agent takes the observation which is a stack of four frames sequentially experienced as the agent is sampling in the DeepMind control suite or the different Atari games. So from this stack of frames, the agent is gonna do data augmentation to do contrastive learning. Contrastive learning is the idea of having a loss function that makes the query as similar as possible to the positive keys and then as dissimilar as possible to the negative keys. So in this framework, this is gonna be an auxiliary self-supervised learning loss that's gonna help with the representation mapping from these high dimensional stacks of uh, image frames into the low dimensional Q representation that the reinforcement learning agent is gonna use for uh, control input such as soft actor critic or deep Q learning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the stack of frames, it's gonna be augmented by cropping, say it's at 100 by 100 uh, frame, you're gonna crop out an 84 by 84 patch of the same stack of frames uh, applied sequentially, and that's gonna be the positive key. And then you're gonna be matching it with all the other uh, cropped frames from the entire replay buffer to form the negative keys. So this contrastive loss is gonna help the reinforcement learning agent learn this challenging mapping from these high dimensional stacks of frames into a lower dimensional representation that can be used for uh, control tasks like bipedal walking or cheetah run, these different uh, DeepMind control suite tasks, as well as the different Atari games. The authors implement momentum contrastive learning as the auxiliary contrastive loss in the framework. Some of the key ideas of the MoCo framework is that the gradients are only gonna flow through the query neural network encoder of the high dimensional stack of frames experienced in the DeepMind control suite or the Atari games. So the idea of how you update the key encoder is to take a momentum update of adding the new query encoder parameters to the previous iteration's key uh, neural network parameters. So the idea there is that you have this hyperparameter M, the momentum update term, that's awaiting the new step of parameters. So you have M times a previous step, key encoder parameters, plus one minus M times a new query network parameters. And it's worth noting that this momentum hyperparameter is best set at something like 0 0.99999. So you're taking very slow steps of updating the key encoder with respect to the query neural network. So one idea is that you don't want the keys in the queue to be too outdated as you're updating this query neural network. So the MoCo framework employs a queue a queue, this last in, first out data structure, is where the newly sampled batches of data, the most recently sampled stacks of frames from the observations and the reinforcement learning control tasks, are popped under the top of the queue 
and then outdated keys are popped out of the back of the queue, so you no longer use them for similarity comparison and the contrastive loss. And the next idea comes from CPC, contrastive predictive coding, to do the similarity comparison between the queries and the keys. You're not just gonna take the, uh, multiply the query by the key, you're also gonna multiply it by this learnable weight matrix to facilitate the comparison. So similar idea as in SimCLR, where you're doing a multi-layer perceptron projection from the queries and the keys into this new space to do the loss function comparison. Curl is using multitask learning to further structure the loss and the learning of this mapping from the high dimensional stack of image frames O into a lower dimensional representation Q that goes as input to the uh, soft actor critic or the deep Q learning reinforcement learning agents. So it's interesting to see these gradients go all the way from the reinforcement learning agent back up through Q and then all the way up through the encoder network into O, as well as the loss from the comparison of the queries and the positive and negative keys in the MoCo framework. So it's interesting to note that usually when you're designing these multitask uh, learning systems, you have to take into account the, you know, the different, the gradients can pull the weights into all these different directions. The magnitudes can be really different and you might have to scale them with these extra hyperparameters. But one interesting characteristic of curl is that the authors don't mention having to do extensive uh, different like hyperparameter search or weightings of the gradients to make this framework work. So it's interesting that this multitask setup of contrastive loss and the reinforcement learning loss is able to behave so nicely together with learning this mapping from O to Q. By employing the contrastive loss to better learn the representations from O to Q to facilitate reinforcement learning from pixel-only inputs, Curl is able to achieve successful control on the DeepMind control suite only from pixel inputs. So this is in contrast to doing things like physical state inputs. So for example, in the bipedal walking agent in OpenAI's gym, you have these different state inputs like the whole angle speed, angular velocity, and these different sort of force sensors or different, you know, physical state sensors that go on the hip and knee joint of this bipedal walking agent that makes the control task a lot easier than just observing the landscape, especially when you get to these more complex tasks, like in the DeepMind control suite, such as cheetah run or like the humanoid walking, these more complex control tasks where having the physical state helps control enormously. Another interesting area of research with respect to doing control from pixels is the RoboNet dataset. This data set contains something around 15 million of these sequences of these frames of observing these different viewpoints of robots performing tasks like picking up a ball and putting it in a cup or stacking blocks on top of each other or all these different little robotic manipulation tasks that are compiled in the RoboNet data set. So as we're moving towards uh, control from pixels like the curl framework, it's gonna be interesting to see transfer learning from these massive uh, viewpoint da uh, control data sets into these fine tuning them for uh, more real world robotic control tasks. Self-supervised learning is most commonly thought of as a play on massive unlabeled data. For example, in natural language processing, we're able to get these massive data sets of unlabeled text by just say scraping all the articles that exist on the internet and using that as a massive text data set to learn unsupervised representations from. But in this case, there's no giant unlabeled data set of millions of images available beforehand. The data set is collected online from the agent's interactions and changes dynamically. So what I think is showing here is that the contrastive self-supervised learning objective is a better way of learning representations than say a supervised learning objective or these other different ways of doing self-supervised learning like say a, an autoencoder or something like that. So it's showing the power of contrastive learning by learning this from scratch with the reinforcement learning task rather than just taking advantage of massive data sets such as RoboNet. So it's interesting to see self-supervised learning not only uh, useful as a play on massive data, but also as a way of structuring loss functions. These are the results of the curl algorithm on the DeepMind control suite across different sample efficiency benchmarks, such as 100,000 interaction steps with the environment compared to 500,000 interaction steps with the DeepMind control suite environment. Curl is compared to models that predict the future or model-based reinforcement learning algorithms such as Planet and Dreamer, as well as other variants of the soft actor critic model. It's also compared with the physical state soft actor critic model. So in this case, the state uh, SAC isn't just controlling the DeepMind control suite agents with the pixel inputs. It's also using those miscellaneous uh, like angular velocity, these little physical state representations to further the control. And you can see the performance difference between the pixel only uh, curl algorithm compared to using the state. 
Most notably, you see the difference in the Cheetah Run task. You only achieve 694 with 500,000 uh, iteration steps with curl compared to 826 when you're using the full physical state representation. So showing that there's still some gap between uh, doing control from pixels compared to also using the physical state. And you can also see the gains from going through 100,000 steps up to 500,000 steps. You can see these huge uh, sample efficiency gains in Ball in the Cup, Walker, uh, Cheetah Reacher. When you compare the Dreamer agent from Google with Curl, you see huge gains in Curl compared to the Dreamer agent. And you see Dreamer agent really needs to get to these 500,000 interaction steps with the environment before it can start getting these uh, better numbers on the DeepMind control suite. This plot further shows the results of the curl algorithm and the number of environment steps it takes to achieve a certain performance level. So one way of seeing uh, which agents are able to control from pixels compared to physical state and to get a better sense of this gap is to try to predict the physical state directly from the pixels and then plot the error of these models. So you see, for example, the cheetah run model, which has a uh, relatively poor performance relative to the other, uh, like ball in the cup, car pull swing up, the other DeepMind control suite task, you see in the cheetah run uh, test of predicting the physical state from the pixels, they have a higher error compared to say finger spin or this other task. So it's showing the difference between uh, you know t these different tasks that aren't quite ready to be controlled from pixels and still need these physical state inputs. This ablation in the paper shows that even these subtle small ideas like doing the momentum update compared to no momentum update in the momentum contrastive learning framework for structuring that auxiliary contrastive self-supervised learning loss it has a massive uh, performance difference when you're comparing not using it to using it. Additionally, doing that uh, bilinear projection where you have that learnable weight matrix W that helps you transform the queries and keys for comparing them to one another has a huge gain over just doing, say, the cosine similarity between the query and key representation vectors. So it shows that even these uh, little subtle ideas actually have a huge uh, difference in performance. This ablation shows the performance differences between using a stack of the last four frames as the observation O compared to just using a single uh, pixel image as the state representation O to start this uh, mapping from. So you see in some environments like Cheetah Run, Walker, Cart Pole, and Finger Spin, you get a big benefit by using these temporal features or the stacked frames compared to just using a single image frame at say T, T plus one, T plus two, just using the current time step uh, image as the input to the reinforcement learning and the contrastive loss uh, framework. So you see these big gains by using this uh, stacked frame observation representation O. This ablation is describing the difference between saying just using this image compared to this stack of the last four experienced images as the agent is interacting with the environment. Then you form the positive and the uh, queries, the positive key in the query, by cropping out an 84 by 84 patch from this 100 by 100 stack of frames. So it might be interesting to see what kind of data augmentations can be done with respect to these video input sequences. So say we wanted to do a control task where we, instead of just the last four, we wanted the last 30 or the last uh, 60. We might wanna have a different way of doing data augmentation to form the positive key, uh, keys with respect to the query or all these other ways of thinking about how we're gonna form these input representations to account for temporal features as well as the current uh, pixel that you get from, pixel map that you get from the camera. Curl is taking the gradients from both the reinforcement learning loss and the momentum contrastive unsupervised learning loss to update the mapping from O to Q. This ablation, the plots in the red compared to green, show the difference between only using the contrastive learning loss to go from O to Q and then just using Q for reinforcement learning. So you can imagine that if you're just doing O to Q with contrastive learning, you can save yourself a lot of extra computation by putting the reinforcement learning gradients back through uh, you know, the encoder network to go from O to Q. So this is an interesting plot to me because particularly in some tasks like finger spin or the walker, ball and cup, reacher, and carpool, really only cheetah run, you don't really seem to need to also take the reinforcement learning gradients. But the cheetah run is the most complex task in which we saw that we're still not quite uh, nearing that 1,000 maximum performance on the DeepMind control suite, uh, you know, metric suite. So we're seeing the uh, difference between only taking the gradients from the contrastive loss compared to doing both the reinforcement learning gradients and the contrastive learning gradients. One of the surprising findings of CURL is that they're able to achieve improved sample efficiency or making more use out of the data that they get from interacting with the environment using a model-free reinforcement learning algorithm. Compared to model-free, model-based reinforcement learning algorithms 
try to learn either a pixel space reconstruction where you uh, take these uh, images from the replay buffer and you pass them through a variational autoencoder and try to you know, predict the future in this way such that you can sample trajectories from your model of the environment or in Mu0, how they learn how to do this planning that lets them do better control by having this Monte Carlo tree search look ahead that makes it so you have a better action distribution as you go down the tree compared to just this you know, immediate estimate of do I do this or this as you do this Monte Carlo tree search, which you're able to do by having a world model or a way of predicting the future from the current state. So curl is able to improve on sample efficiency without predicting the future which is somewhat surprising because, you know, a lot of the literature seems to point in this direction of model-based reinforcement learning for improving sample efficiency. There's a lot of interesting details as well with the 100,000 interaction step metric for evaluating sample efficient reinforcement learning algorithms. We want our real world robots to learn how to walk or perform these different manipulation tasks as fast as possible or by interacting with as little, uh, you know, steps of the environment as possible. But I also think it's interesting in the context of safe RL where you're not just interested in the, how many interactions it takes, but you're interested in if it is gonna break the robot while it's learning. So I think it's another interesting dimension to stack on to looking at these metrics for efficient learning of real world robot control. Thanks for watching this explanation of CURL, Contrastive Unsupervised Representation Learning for Reinforcement Learning. By adding this auxiliary contrastive unsupervised learning, integrating all the advancements from the Momentum Contrastive Learning Framework from researchers at Facebook, they're able to improve on the mapping from these high dimensional stack of frames observations into the latent and representation queue as used for reinforcement learning control. Hopefully from this video you got a sense of this algorithm and the different ideas that make it able to do uh, DeepMind continuous control successfully from only pixel inputs and achieving success on the discrete control Atari games as well. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.